Hey YouTube, this is Kevin. I'm back with a Night Rose deck profile. Uh, this is going to be post GBT14. As you can see, I have the Night Rose Stride uh, that came as a box topper. Uh, this is mostly catered towards my local meta. Uh, some lists uh, you may have uh, different than mine, since uh, I may not have some of the cards that other people may ha uh, have in their decks. So yeah, uh, we have Stargate running around. We have um, Sure, Nui, uh, Dominate. We have a lot of control decks, mostly in uh, personal uh, mains that uh, people use for fun. So, this is my medium, um, my casual deck uh, for the most part. Um, so, we have the Forerunner, Grenache. Uh, I usually uh, leave them in Soul for the Gust play, which is pretty obvious, uh, pretty uh, self explanatory, really. So, because we want him to hit the drop zone as fast as we can. Uh, next, I have four grade three night rows um, that are your main uh, vanguard you need to play the deck. Uh, her GB2 skill is pretty important, and uh, her CB1 skill, uh, we don't use it that much, but in some context, context you uh, pro probably use it on your first stride and you know maybe that'd be a lazy or something that uh, you can or even that or even this that you can uh, uh, assign 3k uh, another good option is King Serpent where you can just refund that counter blast you just spent so yeah it still has its use uh, two Starlights for the Rear Guard Night Rose. Um, although I don't song her that much, uh, she can be used uh, still because of the Bones, Storm, and uh, things you can uh, call to, or uh, Negro Lazy, things you can call uh, from the drop zone, and then uh, proc her ability. This is pretty nice. Um, some people don't like her, which is I pretty much understand because of um, you want to uh, dedicate more slots to your grade twos or grade ones, or even play choppy, which is understandable. We have one storm because he extends plays, uh, pretty much a uh, well worth slot to put him in. Next for grade twos, we have two lazies here. Uh, I don't usually uh, go into them too much because uh, your opponent may uh, be smart enough to deny you resources and whatnot. So uh, especially after you gauche, uh, you he's not really that great. But in other cases, we have Rosal, or you go in your Songer, or you do your shenanigans. He's not that bad. Um, if you want to make another column, and your stuff gets refunded at the end if he's still there. So, um, yeah, uh, probably would recommend three or four, but to me, this is okay. Two Rambling Shades, so this is pretty much the, the slots that, um, that could be three and four uh, Negro Lazies, obviously. So, uh, this is my personal uh, preference to have this kind of a rush unit. Uh, and uh, be able to fill your drop zone uh, by swinging out the Vanguard Mill 2. Not that bad of a unit, it's just it's not really seen that much. So uh, Three Rooks because we uh, we want to uh, get something nice for uh, from our Negrobone place. Uh, three Cannoneers so we can pop things that are pesky and probably problem uh, rear guards and the draw power is always nice and we can also easily refund that uh, counter boss uh, cost uh, now I'm running two king serpents because we have Rosal that can mass call uh, we re refund that counter blast uh, we can also uh, refund the Megiddo cost for some reason uh, you want to extend your plays and do like 7 to 10 attacks 
Uh, this is there at two for that reason. Or ship or whatever you want to do. Uh, so that's all the grade twos. So and yeah, uh, grade one lineup. Uh, four unflippers. You can run seawalls if you like recycling your PGs. I personally would probably go back and get the Gust uh, grade one from Onslaught of Dragon Souls. Uh, what he does is when he's called to the Guardian Circle, you can discard one and it'll act as a PG. Uh, so that would make Negronora the G guard into a um, PG by the cost of two cards, which is not horrible, but it could save your life against a restanding Vanguard. Uh, next, I'm running four bones, pretty self-explanatory. Uh, now with Rosal, you can send send them away, which was a problem before, uh, because you only had uh, pretty much the stand trigger for Torin to get hollowed, so that is a really good thing for Rosal to hollow everything else she calls. Uh, four Strike Potter, because we want to see the Great Three Night Rose almost every game, and also uh, substitute for uh, Strike Costs, obviously. And we have two of uh, the Bales. Uh, he makes your Lily plays free. Um, and he gets bottom deck, so you, uh, you have one more card in the deck where you can not deck out, <laughs> possibly. And overall a good card because um, he's a ghosty where you, uh, you can use um, Obadiah or whatever. Uh, if you ha have him somehow because you milled it uh, in the drop, he's an okay booster. Trigger lineup. Four heals, uh, Bushy confirmed. We will get the double rare heal, just when. <laughs> so uh, the draw drop is okay, um, since we want things into the drop zone. Uh, four not rose crits. Uh, if you if you guard with these and then uh, use Rosal's skill to get these back onto the board, you can uh, that's make the most value out of it. If you can't trigger them. Uh, four of these uh, Rusty's Banshee. Uh, it's a good turbo card and uh, turbos out your soul. And uh, no, not many, not much qual, uh, no many, not much uh, to. Um, uh, there's not a lot of problems with uh, having this card in hand. It's either you can guard with it or you can uh, put it in soul. Uh, 30 scrambling because we want to draw or we want to hollow things and get things off the board uh, for those problematic matchups that use the bind zone for their advantage you don't do this obviously but other than that she's a really good card and then one make because we only run one of and then we can um, do a stupid lily place where you can give something to give your vanguard 10k and yeah. Uh, strides, we have four Rosal. Um, if you can, uh, you can first Strider by G guarding uh, early, and then you have the two uh, phase up cards in the G zone to proc off her uh, bonus crit if you call three. And then she has the um, ability of for how many Night Roses you have in your drop zone and name you can assign 5k to x number of units with how many um, those you have in your drop uh, which is uh, pretty much the fix that we needed uh, two of the go gauches or gauche uh, for your first time first stride option two songers in case you have five open counter blast and a whole board uh, you can go ham now for against decks that can't do anything to your regards. Um, one Obadiah because sometimes your first stride doesn't um, have a lot of options in your drop zone. Uh, you can just drop a lazy, drop drop something, make a board. Uh, so, and then one GB8 
Uh, he's probably better than Megiddo than, uh, if you're at GB8. So, yeah. And then when Megiddo, uh, for those times where your opponent um, drops their hand the turn before, or like have little hand, and then at 5 damage you just poke him. One Nora, I would probably run two, uh, just because of the gust play. Two Lilies for Ken and Ear, Mick, uh, Bale, as I said before, can do this for free. One Corpse Dragon uh, as a mill two option uh, for your first G guard. And then one Colburn, uh, because we have decks that have Absurd Hand, and the discard isn't that much of a problem in this deck. So, yeah. And if I were to run the poker, this will be the reason why, too. Uh, Matchups, to go quickly, uh, probably lose to Dominate, probably lose to Gears, you probably lose to Aqua Force. Uh, but because uh, they're really consistent, uh, either Thalvas or uh, Blue Wave, uh, they can g rush you to death. Um, uh, great Nature, Managarmar, Rhino, uh, those shenanigans can get to you if you allow them to live. Um, Stargate, uh, Victor, you pretty much lose to. Uh, Chaos, uh, they probably have that advantage too because now they can uh, lock cards from the hand. But uh, if you wipe, right, wipe your own board uh, with your Rosals, you might have a chance. Deleters, if they go off, then you probably won't win. <laughs> uh, but if they don't, then uh, it's the other way around. Kagero, um, with the help of Victor and more of these uh, rush heavy decks, Overlord isn't much of an issue in tournament play. But uh, if uh, you just worry about Zingenberg, just beating you. Um, another thing. Oh, and also, uh, Denal Griffin is also a problem. Um, let's see. Uh, everyone else, uh, probably. Oh, Mega Colony is a. Uh, Gridora is pretty interesting as a matchup. Um, if you try to play. Or it really depends on how. how um, how, how your opponent opens, if they like go crazy on you and you don't have cards to, uh, you don't have anything to call out for your rear guards or they just stun you, which is an issue um, for some reason you don't hollow out your cards <laughs> which is very hard to do, I believe, as you have Rosal now but for some reason you get stunned and you, you don't have things to attack with, so uh, they could go in their favor, but at the same time, you can mass call as um, as long as they don't um, uh, don't let them uh, well, you pretty much don't let them open open Tyrannus you, and then you'll be okay um, everyone else uh, Luard, you might have an even match but if they roll off, then uh, you can go die up Phantom Buster Diablo or um, Drag Fall and do a lot of pressure. And also, Blasters, they can rush you. And one more uh, Genesis. Uh, the new Revelation stuff uh, is actually pretty formidable. They make bigger columns than before, and um, I think it's a lot more deadlier than Wiseman now. Um, as that's my personal take on that. So if you can kill them on your Rosal, you kill them on your multi attacks, you can pretty much have your way with them. And yeah, that's pretty much all the matchups I can think of that are prevalent in my, in my locals. So uh, like, comment, subscribe. That's the end of the video, and uh, I don't want you to think. Um, I'll probably uh, be okay with this build for now as uh, G begins to dwindle down. So, yeah.